right here, you got to loosen that pinch bolt and then drop that whole knuckle down below the strut. And there's just not enough movement in the entire assembly to do that. Hey, Anton here from GT Canada. Today we're working on the Ford Flex again. So today I'm going to show you guys how to take out the front strut assembly and put it back in. So there's been a lot of information on the internet saying you got to take a lot of the whole front end apart and that it's a long job. Some people are saying it took more than eight hours to do this. So today we're going to see how long this actually does take to do. I'm going to walk you through all the steps. I'm going to show you the steps. So a lot of the other videos you can find, there are other videos and I'll admit that. But they're just walking you through it after the fact. They did the work and then they're saying, oh yeah, this is what I did. I'm going to show you what I did. You're going to see it come apart. You're going to see the frustrations that, that I might have with this. Uh, and we're going to get through it. So I've got lots of time. It's a Saturday morning. And uh, we're going to get through hopefully both sides today. Um, but I'll walk you through one side. So we're not going to do both sides on film. Once you do one side, it'll be the same for the other. So uh, a lot of people have avoided this job. Normally this is easy. You can do it in about an hour on every car I've ever done this on before. So this one, I know there's more to take apart on this car, which is fine. We're gonna just, we're gonna systematically go through it and we're gonna get this done. Now, as always, you're gonna wanna jack the vehicle up, put this, the tire underneath the frame of the car. If you've got some jack stands, it'd be a great idea to put those in as well. We're gonna be working from the top side of the of the engine compartment as well. So you're gonna to need to pop the hood so that we can get to the bolts for the top of that strut assembly. But otherwise, it's going to be pretty straightforward. So the first thing we wanna do is just kinda of get a layout of what we're looking at here. So here's the whole front end as it normally sits. We need to pull this strut out. So I'm going to rip this apart. I'm going to put the new one in and this design just doesn't allow, right here, you gotta loosen that pinch bolt and then drop that whole knuckle down below the strut. And there's just not enough movement in the entire assembly to do that. And so what most guys end up doing is pulling off the lower control arm and dropping that. And then to do that, you've gotta pull off the steering arm, you've gotta pull off your strut, uh, your sway bar link, You've got to pull off your brakes so that that whole assembly can drop down. So the first thing we're going to tackle is these brakes. And the reason for that is because I know they got to come off. Now some people take these bolts off because that takes the caliper out and leaves the frame. Since I know I need to take this disc off as well, I'm going to take the other bolts out. So that's those guys there. And I'm going to show you why that's so good. So once we get this out, see we're not replacing, we're not replacing the brake pads, we're not replacing the brake rotors. So there's no reason at all to screw around with that part of the system. So if you take just these two bolts off, the entire assembly will come out all as one. So now I got those bolts out, and what you're gonna see is it's hard to do one-handed, you don't wanna let it fall. See how that comes off as one whole piece. Like that. So now there's nothing holding this disc on at all. This whole assembly, we're going to suspend it from something over here so that it's not hanging by the, by the hose. But now all you got to do is put just these two bolts back in to put it back together instead of trying to mess around with the caliper and the floating pins and all that. And then this should just come right out. You might have a screw in there. I don't because mine were rusted and I think I drilled them out when I replaced the uh, the rotors a while ago. So uh, it should just come right off. So just like that, you can see we got the caliper off. It's hanging by a strap. Just uh, found the edge of the plastic there. I'll hold it just nicely. You want to make sure that your uh, brake line there is not getting tugged or yanked in any, any way. And we've pulled the, the rotor off. And I like to put my rotor with the hub side down when I'm lying it down just because I don't want to damage the braking surface on it. So this is what we're dealing with now. We're about halfway there. So the next thing to do is loosen this axle nut. Now I used 
I used a one and a quarter inch deep socket and it just fits right on there. There's probably a millimeter equivalent as well, but if you've got axle nut sockets, then chances are you'll have one that fits. One and a quarter inch is what I used. And I'm just gonna leave that loose like that for now. Now, if you've already saw my video about how to install these, you know that this has a taper lock style lock at the top. So there's no way to hold it. There's no, so you gotta just keep pressure at the back. So you remember before what I did was I put my Thor hammer in the back here and just rested it there. And then that allowed me to put a wrench on the back of this like this and then pull forward towards me, which gives it enough push to hold that taper lock in. You want to make sure that's tight and I'm going to do it with uh, impact wrench just because I have it. Uh, you can use a regular wrench on there as well, but you want to make sure that's held tight until this nut is all the way off. Otherwise it'll spin and you could damage your um, sway bar link. And we don't want to damage that because we don't want to have to replace it. Okay. Now that that's loose, I used a 15 millimeter deep socket. Um, you might have to tap it to get it free. Make sure you've got the nut on a couple spins so you don't mushroom the head of that bolt. Cause like I said, we're reusing it. So we don't want to damage anything. Okay. So now that we got that sway bar link out, that grease is from when I super greased this thing, when I put it in, it's not leaking. Um, we got this ABS wire. Now you just slide it off of here. I've already done that. So you just slide this off of here and we're going to trace that down into there, uh, right in there. We got to just get a little socket on there. So probably a six mil or so we, uh, you know, this might be enough, enough hose or enough wire to not cause problems, but you don't want to screw around with this. If you break this, you got to replace it. So why would you one bolt, take it off, get it out of the way. So there you can see we got, it was a six mil and um, it was a little bit tight. So I just got my, I just got my flat blade screwdriver in there just to kind of get it worked free. And then once it's free, pulls right out just like that. Now we want to just set that up out of the way. So for now, I'm going to put it there. In fact, I might pull it over to here and kind of tuck it up with this. Just so that it's, it's kind of managed up out of the way, just like that. Okay. So I've also pulled out the steering link so that I can move this whole assembly. And one thing that I can notice now, if you look up in there, so there's a bearing up there. You hear that rattling sound? So that's the bearing binding up. So part of the problem I was having was during lane changes and stuff, I could feel the wheel binding. So that's where the problem was, was happening. So I'm going to replace the whole thing just because the strut is a pain in the butt anyway. And the ones I bought came with a new bearing on the top, a whole complete assembly. So you might as well do it all while you're there. Don't have to do the job twice. Okay. So it turns out I do need to pull this lower control arm off. So I've now pulled the bolts out of here. There's two in there. And then there's one that's a bit of a pain in the butt down on this side. I don't know if I can get a good shot of it, uh, right in there. Um, but you can get it. It might be tight. Mine was loctited in. So I had to call in reinforcements to get it. Okay. So to do these top bolts, they're a 13 mil or a half, uh, half inch. What you're going to find with a short one, it doesn't quite fit with it on your socket, but a tall one's going to be too tall to get over this shroud for the back too. So what you're going to do is put your socket on first like that. And then you can get this in. it won't be able to snap in, but you can get it in enough that you can release it. So I'm going to pull the back two off right now. The front two I can easily get with my impact. So I'm going to take those completely off before I pull the axle and everything out from the back. Okay. So I've loosened, well, I've removed the top two bolts. Like I said, at the back, these ones have been loosened right until they're at the very, very top. So there's a lot of sway that's in here. So I can swing this however I need to. So the bottom bolts are out and this will allow me to really just get this right get that axle all the way out. So we're going to pull that out and we're going to lower this whole thing all as one. I want to have a controlled release here. So I'm going to pull this part out 
And by pulling it all forward, that will allow me to release the axle so that it's not part of this whole assembly. Once it's all released out, I'll be able to drop the whole thing down. I'll have to get a helper to just uh, release the top bolts and then the entire assembly is gonna drop down as one full assembly. You can see everything's all out. Now this looks like a lot. I promise you it's not. So we've got the entire assembly here, all out. Now it's time to pop that bolt out, remove the old assembly, put the new one, and do everything in reverse. It's gonna be easy. All right, so here I'm looking at the old one next to the new one. You can see it's a complete assembly. So all I gotta do is just slide this back into the other one. You wanna make sure that it is for your naturally aspirated and or your EcoBoost. So they are different. This one, because it's naturally aspirated, I will be using the naturally aspirated set. Turns out the EcoBoost ones are a lot easier to find. This one I ordered on eBay. So while I was putting this together, you can see I got the shock all back on there, but I decided to have a look at this. Get in the way. I decided to have a quick look at this and I think this is in bad shape. So now is a good time to replace that because there's probably no better time. So I'm going to just pull the lower ball joint off and it comes as one complete assembly. So there's nothing to do there. You just pull the whole thing off, swap the new one in. So I'm going to do that while I'm here. Uh, it's going to be a couple hours before my parts guy can get the new part in. So that's going to delay the project for a little bit, but I still will be able to get this all back in today. So while I'm taking a break for my new parts to show up, my new lower control arm, I'll show you guys kind of what the shop's starting to look like here. Uh, definitely, as you can tell, I am not a professional and I'm doing this work with pretty much basic hand tools. I showed you guys my bag of tools on how to go to a wrecker. That's the same bag of tools that I'm using here. The only uh, thing that I wouldn't normally have in my hand tools is my impact wrench, which is really, I bought this thing 20 years ago. There's nothing special about it. In fact, I need to uh, break all of the really tight bolts loose with an impact wrench first, or sorry, with a, with a breaker bar first, and the impact will just take it off the rest of the way. So everything I'm doing here today, and in most of my videos, you could do yourself with basic hand tools at home. So I know I told you already, this looks like a big job because the whole front end is apart here. But really, if you follow through as systematically as I did, you shouldn't have any issues. We've got the new strut on. We've got the uh, lower ball joint and control arm off. You can see that here. Now, the thing that I noticed, really, I kind of suspected this, but if you look in there, that's all really kind of gummy and nasty. There's some stuff in there, but can you hear that sound? That should not sound like that at all. If it does, then something's wrong with it. It should not be this flexible either. So that could be a lot of the reason for why I was experiencing kind of the looseness on the highway. But those top uh, of the struts, those bearings there, were definitely no good as well. So my new part has arrived. So I'm gonna put this guy on as well. There is a left and a right, so make sure you got the correct one for the correct side. The passenger side is the right side, and that's what I've got to put on. So here I've got the complete assembly, so you can see brand new strut assembly, including the top. Make sure you get the top, because those parts wear out as well, and if you don't replace it, you will have to later. And I got the new lower control arm with ball joint. So I'm going to put this whole assembly back in the same way it came out. So as I pop it up, I want to make sure I drive, put the drive shaft through into the, uh, the proper spot so that I'm not fighting with it. And then the whole thing should just slide right into position. It's just a matter of bolting everything back up. Okay, so we've got it. Currently, it's just hanging. So it's still loose. It's just hanging on the top here by 
just the top. These are just finger tight on the top edge. So that's enough to give me the flexibility that I need here. So the next thing I'm gonna do while it's hanging, before I put the lower control arm back into place, I'm going to put my axle shaft in where it belongs. And then as it slides all in, I'll be able to line up my, uh, my lower control arm as well. Okay, so we've got it hanging in here. I've got that side in. Now, when you go to put this side in, you may find out that it doesn't reach. It just it won't, it seems like you're probably a half inch short. What that's gonna be is this part of your axle has come out. Now, if you've watched other videos or read on other forums, they say that if that pops out, you're screwed. Now, that's not entirely the case. What you gotta do, treat it like a broken joint that needs to go back into place. So you'll have to pull this kind of off to the side, put your brakes off to the side so that you've got full mobility of that. And if you just kind of wiggle around, pull out and rotate as you're putting in, it will pop back into place. And when it pops back into place, what you should notice is you've got a lot more um, squished up rubber of boot here. So if it's not squished up and it's out and super extended, it'll still be in. If you rotate it, you can feel it locking in there. So it's not like it's fully disengaged. But what you will know is that it won't go in far enough. And when it does that, you won't have the flexibility that you need for this to move up and down and to absorb that shock. So it does have to move in like that, exactly how you see it. And then that'll give you enough room to get your entire lower control arm back into place. So some guys say that you're screwed, you'll have to buy a new axle. You shouldn't be screwed as long as you're willing to give it some patience and just kind of pull out, twist and back in and try it in multiple different positions. And if you hold it at the right angle and line it up just right as you're popping in, it'll pop back into place and you'll feel it. This may require two people. And so, uh, you know, have a friend handy nearby to help you with this. But we're at the point now where really it's just putting everything back into position and bolting it all up. So just like that, everything is all back together. You can see you want to double check everything. Make sure you didn't miss putting anything back in. That includes this uh, wheel speed sensor. Make sure that's all in, tightened down, bolted up. When you're doing anything that has a... Uh, a nut on the top so this you want to make sure that you've got a wrench on here while you're spinning the big nut because you do not want that shaft to spin if it spins that can wreck the ball joint in the socket and then you'll be replacing this part which you don't want to do so make sure that's tight and then cinch that down same with up here you want to make sure that's pushed through from the back so that it locks and doesn't spin or if it's got the little allen key um, hole on the top which this one doesn't uh, but if it does you want to stick an allen key in there and then use a wrench to put it on don't use an impact once it's tight you can certainly use an impact to cinch it the rest of the way but you don't want to do that on the way in because i've seen a lot of guys they'll just let that spin with an impact until it bites and then sucks down that will wreck this the boot in the back it'll spin in there and it won't last so you want to make sure that the parts that you're putting on will survive make sure that your brake line is not kinked or cinched or anything that that's all tight make sure everything's all on here you want to make sure that axle nut is tight as well and if it's got a these ones don't have a little pinch um, tab on them or a uh, castle nut or anything like that so you want to make sure it's torqued down nice and tight don't forget that you did do work up at the top here so you want to make sure these all four are tight if they're not you'll get clunks and, and stuff and it'll be bad news so just have a look over, make sure that everything is all good. Once you're happy with that, put the wheel on and clean up your mess. I showed you already my workspace. I got just about every tool I own out of the bag looking for different tools and, and whatever. So clean up your workspace, make sure you're not any uh, extra bolts or anything that you don't have any of those and you should be good to go. So I got the uh, whole front end all back together now. It's back on the ground. I'm going to do the road test, but that's really um, how it's done. So you've seen it come from start to finish, taking all the pieces off and how that's all done. There's a little bit of dicking around with the parts that I got. So uh, one thing to watch out for is that the hole for the sway bar end link was not correct 
on the new strut that I got. Now it was a budget strut. I got both of them. It was like 250 bucks Canadian, including shipping. So I'm going to reach out to the guys that I bought them from and see if they've got any ideas on that. But I was able to make it work. So it is all back together, uh, but it wasn't a perfect fit. So all those commercials about using Ford products on your Ford vehicle, that might be valid here. So you might want to spend a little bit more or make sure that they are as exact direct fit. So if they're not, then you're going you're gonna to have a little bit of problems that you're going to have to deal with, just like what I did. But otherwise, it is a pretty straightforward job. You just need to know what you're up against and what you have to do to, to get it all done. So step by step by step. Uh, it definitely is helpful to have an extra set of hands. And if you don't stop to chat, um, really, I was on track to be done this job in about two hours, two and a half hours for one side. So I, I had some people show up that wanted to chat and blah, blah, blah. So the job slowed down. Um, but if you're focused on it and it's just get in, get it done, get it, get move on. If you plan for three hours per side, that should be plenty of time as long as you don't have extra parts to wait for it to come in. But it's really, it is a doable job. So it's not something to be afraid of. Just know that it is definitely not as easy as what uh, a typical vehicle would be. Usually you can be in and out in an hour easily. This is really out of the ordinary to have to uh, do as much as you do for this job. So that's, uh, that's all. Good luck on your job, but now you've at least seen it. Hey, thanks for watching another GT Canada video. We got lots of great stuff in store, so be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you can stay up to date on all the latest stuff as we upload it. Comment below and watch the next video.